Building relationships with students who display non-compliant, disruptive or even violent behaviour can be challenging as a teacher. And if you have more than one student with difficult behaviours in your class, then there's an added complexity. And there are a few ways that this may play out. Students may resist all your usual methods of building relationships by not listening to you, by talking when you're talking, and being unwilling to open up to you in any way. Students may also be tricky at first, and after you've made progress and the student seems to be responding to you, then they have a day or a number of days when nothing you do works, and you may feel that you're back to square one. And another way that this relationship may play out is that students may display behaviours that really push your buttons and you can find it very difficult not to react negatively. And in all honesty, you don't feel like you can build a relationship with the students and you may not even feel that you want to. This is part of a series about what you can do when you have a number of difficult students in your class. And I'm referring specifically to a younger class, such as kindergarten, year one or year two. What you can do to address these issues, how you can prevent poor student behaviour and how you can increase levels of student engagement so that everyone's winning. In this video particularly, you'll learn how to build and sustain relationships with younger students so that you reduce the incidence of difficult student behaviour and increase student learning and wellbeing and so that you can increase your job satisfaction and save your sanity. I'm Mari Amaro from The Highly Effective Teacher. I'm a teacher and an author, and I've been working with students and supporting teachers for over 30 years. I'm passionate about helping teachers improve teaching and learning practices. I combine research and experience to provide strategies that improve student learning by improving classroom management. And I focus on those practices, strategies that can actually give you back time because you're working more effectively. I love coaching teachers so that they thrive in the teaching profession, not just survive. And I emphasize teacher wellbeing because improved teacher wellbeing means improved student wellbeing, and that contributes to better academic and social outcomes for everyone. If you'd like to learn more about how to be a highly effective teacher, please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell. We put out two videos every week, so make sure you don't miss any of the content. If you know anyone who you think would benefit from the teaching practices that we talk about in our videos, please share these with colleagues, with friends and family. Everyone knows a teacher or someone who works in a school. Relationships are the cornerstone of effective teaching and they require skills that are appropriate to the age of the students. What you may do with upper primary age students to build a positive relationship may not be appropriate or effective when you're dealing with younger students. Building relationships with younger students requires, number one, connection. Use games, simulations, role plays, singing, art, dancing, small group work and individual support to get to know your students and to let them get to know you. Talk to your students during class, during breaks, out in the playground, and get to know what they like, what they don't like, what they enjoy at school, what they don't enjoy, about their families, about anything to do with them, really. And for students with challenging behaviour, you may have to work a little bit harder because if they have a trauma background, they may be wary of adults or they may be very accustomed to just getting into trouble from adults and so they may not trust you. Number two, connect with parents. Get to know your students' parents and if possible work closely with them to support the students. Time allocated for parent-teacher interviews and getting parents on board with you is time well spent. When the discussions at home about school and about the teacher are positive the student's more likely to respond positively to you. And contact home with positive messages about the student as soon as you possibly can, especially if you already know that the student has a history of difficult behaviour, either at preschool or at school. Students, many students across the board, have identified home and positive home contact as one of the most effective ways that they can be positively reinforced 
parents feel good about hearing positive news from school and those feelings are translated to their child. And if the parents are used to receiving bad news from school, they will appreciate the good news even more. Connection between home and school can be the key to managing difficult student behaviour. If you'd like to learn more about that, check out our video on how to build positive relationships with parents so that students are more engaged and that learning is improved. Number three, consistency. Do what you say you will do. For younger students, providing a calm, stable and predictable environment is really important and that starts with the teacher. You need to be calm, stable and predictable. Young people need that safe environment so that they feel safe at school and you are the person who's the determining factor in creating that environment. Students need to know what they're going to get with you. They need to know that you're not going to be angry with them today about something you laughed at yesterday just because today you're having a bad day. In saying that, there's also a caveat. You are allowed to make mistakes and apologising to your students when you do can be a powerful learning opportunity for your students and can build upon a relationship. Number four, clarity. Be specific about what you want students to do and don't assume anything. Teach and show them the behaviour that you want to see in every, in every context at school, from the playground to assembly to corridors to the reading corner in your classroom. Explicitly teach, practice and reinforce the behaviours that you expect. And explicit teaching involves much more than simply telling. It's providing opportunities for discussion of why behaviour is necessary, practising the behaviour in the context where you expect it, for example, role-playing, how to read books in the reading corner, role-playing how to enter the classroom, role-playing how to pack up equipment. These are all really important, especially for our younger students. And if you'd like to learn more about that, check out our videos on how to set up expectations in the classroom so that you increase on-task student behaviour and reduce the likelihood of non-compliant disruptive behaviours. If you put most of your effort into preventing those kind of behaviours, you'll have more success in your classroom and more likelihood that students will follow the expectations you set. Number five, use pre-correct. The pre-correct is a valuable tool that can support students by reminding them of the appropriate behaviour immediately prior to the situation where it's expected. For example, discussing playground behaviour just before a break and giving them information like play in the kinder area, keep your hands and feet to yourself, tell a teacher if there's a problem, or you could give them one specific instruction like, remember Johnny, you play in the kindergarten area, which is the area with the play equipment. Or remember, Josephine, keep your hands and feet to yourself when you're playing outside. Or remember, Tommy, go to the teacher if you're feeling upset and tell them what's going on. If you'd like to learn more about the pre-correct and how to use it really effectively, check out our video on video about pre-correction where you'll learn what it is and how to use it effectively and what not to do. And number six, this is the most important, I think, for teachers. Have fun and enjoy your students. One of the reasons you became a teacher may be because you enjoy children, and especially if you're teaching the younger classes. You love their personalities, their quirks, their joy for life. So connect with that part of yourself, especially when things are tough. And spend some time with the kids that you really enjoy in that time. And spend time with your class doing some fun things that you know work. Laugh, play and share yourself with your students. It's the aspect of the profession that can be so rewarding. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and happy teaching.